Okay, so today's tutorial is about the design of a microstrip patch antenna at 2.45 GHz using CST Micro Studio. So basically we are going to have uh, start from the very basics of the CST. So this tutorial is suitable for those who have not used CST yet or who are the beginners for CST and want to design antenna in CST. Okay, so what are we going to do is we are going to design a patch antenna as shown here okay microstrip patch antenna consists of a microstrip patch with length and width and a transmission line feed okay so for today's tutorial we are going to use the transmission line feed which is shown here okay and then this microstrip patch and the transmission line feed which are uh, of copper the copper or any conducting material usually it is copper they are placed on a dielectric substrate okay this this is the dielectric substrate here with a height H and this dielectric substrate is backed by a ground plane. Okay, about the properties of the dielectric substrate we will see in the design, during the design. Okay, so what we are going to analyze is the S11 parameters of this antenna, the VSWR, voltage standing wave ratio, the E fields and H fields, surface current distribution. We will see how the currents are distributed on this patch antenna. And the far field radiation patterns okay so all these parameters we are going to analyze and then we are going to apply parametric sweeps in order to optimize the results for the design okay so before we go into the design using CST so this is uh, some theory okay so these uh, equations are from the book Antenna Theory Design and Analysis by Constantine Apollonis. Okay, any addition? The chapter 14 is about microstrip antennas. There, in that chapter, we can find the details of this design procedure. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to specify the ER, which is permittivity, FR, the frequency, H, the height of the substrate, and lambda naught, which is which we can get from the frequency itself. Okay, then we will determine W the width of the patch and length of the patch using these equations okay for width we will use equation 14-6 okay which is dependent on the v naught speed of light frequency and the permittivity okay then we need to calculate the effective dielectric permittivity so that we can calculate the length using 14-7 equation 14-7 okay this is also dependent on the speed of light the frequency of design, the effective dielectric permittivity that we have just calculated and delta L that is shown in this equation. Okay, So all these design details are provided in the chapter 14 of the microstrip antennas. Please go through that chapter and you will know how to design the, how to uh, calculate the length and width of the patch antenna. Okay, so for the transmission line we need to calculate the width of the transmission line okay so for that transmission line this is more towards the basics of the transmission line we can find it in the uh, microwave engineering book by david m posar okay i uh, put a screenshot here this is from the chap uh, chapter 3 page 145 of the microwave engineering okay so from there we can see that the microstrip line which uh, the the width of the microstrip line here depends on the input impedance okay impedance characteristic impedance z naught okay so from there we will calculate the width of the transmission line which is shown here as w as well okay and d is the height of the substrate okay so we will use any of these equations according to this criteria if w by d is less than 2 then we will use first equation if it is greater than 2 then we will use the second part of this equation Okay, so the calculations are very trivial. A is given here. How to calculate based on the characteristic impedance, the permittivity, and that's all. All others are constant. And B is calculated based on the characteristic impedance and the permittivity as well. Okay, so once we have A and B, we can put the values of A and B here based on whichever equation we want to use, whichever part of the equation we want to use. Okay, so please go through these two books uh, these two parts of the books the chapter 14 of the antenna design theory and analysis by balanis and chapter 3 page 145 or all this section by the, the uh, by the david m posar 
okay so after all these calculation this is what we have got the simulated dimensions okay so our patch we have got the width of the patch ws we mention here which is 46.6 the length of this uh, sorry width of the substrate is 46.6 length of the substrate is 38 mm width of the patch is 38.5 length of the patch is 30 This is delta L, the difference between the patch and the substrate. Okay, then we have this total dimension from here until here, which is 11.22. Okay, and then we have this dimension, the inset we call it, which is four millimeter, and the width of the substrate or width of the feed line is 2.88 millimeter. So this is what we are going to design in the CST. Okay, so for CST, we will see the step-by-step -step procedure on how to design this antenna. Okay, once we open CST, we have here the project template. Okay, so let's see. We uh, let's say we start with the new template. Okay, click on the new template, and then we have different options. Okay, in CST, we have microwave and RF optical. Okay, then we have EDA electronics, EMC. we have particle dynamics static low frequency okay we choose the microwaves and rf or optical then we choose antennas okay we click next okay here we have different options as well so for this today today's antenna we just we choose the basic antennas go next okay in antennas we have different options we have waveguide which covers horn cone etc the planar antennas wire antennas okay like uh, the wire antenna like dipole monopole other antennas the phase array antennas the mobile phone integrated antennas reflectors dielectric resonator rfid these are some of the advanced antennas so we go for the planar patch slot etc then we continue with the time domain okay so then this here we can define all our units okay so we are going to keep it in millimeter because we are going to use all the dimensions in millimeter the frequency that we are doing is 2.45 gigahertz so we keep it in gigahertz time is nanosecond just leave it like that kelvin temperature is not relevant for us today okay so all these parameters we can leave here if we want to change later we can also change so but for the time being we just leave them as it is okay okay then frequency minimum and frequency maximum okay here we can define our minimum and maximum frequency okay so let's say we we are designing at 2.45 gigahertz so we keep it from 2 gigahertz until let's say 2.8 gigahertz 2.45 will be somewhere in the middle Okay, this is monitors. What we want to see, we want to see the E field, H field, far field, power flow, power loss. Okay, so we can choose whatever we want from here. Okay, or we can just leave it empty first, and then later we can select it during our design. Okay, then we just click the finish. Okay, then it opens a new window or in the same window it opens a new display okay so this is where we are going to design our antenna okay this bonding box shows us our antenna designing space okay okay then we want to start okay before we go to the start we can either define all our units here okay let me adjust this window okay okay we can define all our parameters here okay let's say we define uh if we see from our this parameter list we have ws which is the substrate with substrate or substrate width so we can define here ws okay expression is we just leave it like that value was 46.6 okay 
okay we give it 46.6 it will come here 46.56 as well and then we can have description that this is the substrate width okay this is one way to uh, define our parameters we can add as many parameters as we want okay or another way is we start the design first and we will go through all these parameters okay so i'll show you the other way we go to modeling and we select this part the brick okay because if you see here our design is uh, all a rectangular shape okay rectangular substrate rectangular patch transmission line then the ground okay so we follow the same thing here we take a brick here okay and then just press escape okay then we have here the name let's say we name it as substrate okay 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 when we are going to design our substrate we, we will try to keep it symmetric means we will keep it as much on the negative axis as on the positive axis so because width of substrate is 46.6 so let's say we design it as ws by 2 on the negative side of the x okay on this side and on the positive side it is ws by 2 so total minus ws by 2 until ws by 2 is total ws okay similarly we have our length okay length of the substrate in the y direction so we call it minus ls by 2 and ls by 2 and then this is the height of the substrate let's say we start from the zero we are we try to keep it uh, we try to keep the starting point zero always okay and then we make it high up to hs which is the height of substrate okay then we have to cho choose our material okay this is the part where we can choose our material so there are options pec vacuum or we can load from the library let's load it from the library okay Le we are using the fr4 material for this design so let's go to f okay there are many options fr4 loss free and fr4 lossy we will choose the fr4 lossy because this is the actual material that is practical with loss okay so all the materials have uh, in actual in practical life the dielectric materials have two important properties one is the epsilon permittivity and the other one is the loss tangent okay or it is called electric tan delta represented here as electric tan d okay so if we choose the loss free there will be no tan delta means there will be no loss in the material so we choose the loss c and we load this material okay once we load this material this will appear here and then we press ok okay then we see here we have already defined ws but ls we haven't defined as yet and hs we haven't defined yet so ls is the length of the substrate if we see from the our design parameters this is 38 mm so we can name it as substrate describe it as substrate length okay, we click ok and then it will ask for the hs because there is another component that we haven't defined okay hs we are using today is 1.6 the substrate of the subst uh, the width uh, height of the substrate usually fr4 is 1.6 mm available okay fr4 is the material that we use for the circuit designs so same material we are using for the antenna design okay pcb circuit designs okay so description is the height of substrate or we keep it simple substrate height okay so this is our substrate now it appears here we can zoom in and zoom out by the scroll of the box okay so this is our substrate now the next step is to design the patch on the top of the substrate so the patch dimensions here we have the width 38.5 length 
30. So, okay, we choose the brick and we escape, press, okay, press escape, okay, we name it as patch, okay, just simply the patch, okay, for the patch, we can see that the X minimum for the patch should be slightly different because what we have here is this distance 0 0.78, so we are not going to uh, place this patch in the middle of the substrate, Rather, we are going to place this patch on the top. Okay, we, we can have two different approaches for this design. Either we can start from this transmission line and then go upwards, or we can start from this patch and then come downwards. So for today, we are going to use this approach. Any one of any one of the approaches we can use. So we are going to use this approach. We are starting from the top. So this 0.78, we will keep the distance at the top. Okay. So for that we have we have already defined the width of the patch, length of the patch and height of the patch here. Okay, so we will go in the X, the width of the patch is symmetrical. So we go for minus WP by 2 to WP by 2. But for the length we have to start from LS by 2 which is this top LS by 2 minus delta L let's say let's call it DL minus L P okay so it will be starting from this on the top let me okay, from this LS minus the delta L part uh, until the minus L P so this is going to be this y minimum okay somewhere around here okay and then we will define the top part which will be ls by 2 again length of substrate by 2 minus dl okay dl okay so now this minimum is this side the maximum is somewhere up here okay then for the z we know that our substrate started from 0 until hs so the patch is placed on top of the substrate so this will start from the height of the substrate and then it will go height of the substrate plus height of the patch okay height of the patch we have already defined here as 0.035 length of the patch we have defined, width of the patch we have defined, we only have to define the delta L here. Okay, so material, don't forget to change the material, we have to find the material from the library. Okay, we can use the copper. Okay, click C. Okay, we can use this copper and this is the properties of this copper. So, we just load this material. Okay, because it was already in the project. So, we load this material and then we click OK. It will ask us for the delta L okay the value for the de delta L is 0 0.78 is it yes 0 0.78 mm and the description is let's call it delta L okay when we click OK it will appear as patch okay now we have this patch here the next part is to define design this inset okay which is 4 mm from the base of the patch Okay, then we will de design this microstrip transmission line. So for that, we will choose again the break. Okay, so for the view, we have different options. Okay, either we can we go here, we can rotate the view, and we can see the front and back of the patch and the substrate, or we can rotate it this way, or any of the. Okay, this is to reset the view. And then we have different options here, okay, different numbers to see different size of the substrate, okay, 0 is for the perspective view, 5 will give us the front, 2 on the side, 3 the back view, 4 on the left, 6 on the right, 7 again, and this will keep repeating. We can either use any numbers if we remember or we can use it manually from this we can choose okay so we are going to design this inset 
here okay then we go to modeling again choose the brick again escape okay let's call it as an inset for the feed okay we call it an inset so inset will be how much if we see again our design so this is the width feed width okay so the inset width is three times the width of the feed micro strip transmission line okay so we call we design it as from minus 1.5 wf to 1.5 wf where wf is the feed width width of the transmission line feed okay then ls minimum is from minus ls by 2 sorry this is from ls by 2 minus dl minus lp exactly same as the this part of the page that we had defined earlier this should be capital l okay and then the maximum is how much ls by 2 minus dl minus lp okay same point plus 4 mm okay 4 mm we are going to define it as inset as y naught okay y naught okay for the z should be same as patch hs height of substrate height of substrate plus height of patch okay material is okay copper okay we can preview it okay okay we need to add the multiple sign here multiply okay so when we preview it will ask us for the width fit uh, feed width which is 2.88 from the design okay 2.8 mm okay we call it feed width okay and then why not which is the inset which is 4 mm right 4 mm here from this point to this point so we call it we give it value of 4 and we call it inset length or anything just for the okay so this is the part that it is going to design so we just click it okay okay then let's zoom in okay so this is what we have now okay let me reset the view okay so this is what we have now our patch this is the inset so we need to take out this part from the patch so what we can do is we can simply go to patch okay either we can go to boolean subtract and we click on the this sub, uh, sorry we click on the inset and we enter okay so this will subtract the insert from this patch okay or either we can use this part or we can use simply the symbol minus okay first we have to click the patch we have to go to boolean we have to subtract and then we have to select the insert and then enter it will simply remove this part from the patch okay so now this is what our patch and the substrate looks like okay then the next part is to design the microstrip transmission line okay so the procedure that we have just used to subtract the inset we can use it to design the slots inside the patch okay later we will see how to design the slots maybe in some other tutorial but the uh, procedure is exactly the same okay so now we are going to design our microstrip feed okay again we take a break let's name it as uh, okay microstrip feed sorry 
okay so microstrip feed should be minus wf by 2 which we have already defined until wf by 2 okay and for the y minimum this should be starting from the bottom of the substrate or this edge the negative side of the substrate which is minus l s by 2 and ending on this side okay so this should be the same as the dimension that we had defined for the inside feed which is l s by 2 okay we are starting from the top l s by 2 minus d l minus l p plus y no y no okay the height is same exactly as the patch again height of substrate plus height of patch the material is copper so we if we preview okay so this will come here exactly where we want it then we click ok okay so now this is what we have a patch and transmission line now we can add both of them okay earlier I showed you how to use the boolean here so again we can use patch we can use add and we click on microstrip feed and enter it will add or what we can do is we can click patch click the plus sign on your keyboard and then click on the microstrip feed and then press enter it will appear as like this okay so this is our micro strip patch this is our transmission line this is substrate so the next thing is the ground plane so for the ground plane we can either use the same procedure as the patch but we have to design it on the back side of the substrate right here either we can use the same procedure okay as we did for the patch with the same thickness 0.035 or another way to design the ground is to extrude it because it is full ground so we just use the extrude we can pick face okay double click the points in working plane okay before extrude we have to select the face we click F F is select face okay we select this face and then we go to extrude okay we name it as ground height is same as our patch 0.035 we are going to give it as in negative and it is copper okay why negative because the our substrate started from zero so when we click it okay it will show us exactly the ground plane that we need okay so this is the ground plane substrate the patch okay so we go back to our okay let's reset the view okay and we can see this is our patch antenna okay now we need to do the port okay port for the port we have to use the okay we have to use the port so we go to simulation okay we can use the waveguide port okay and the port should be on this side okay at the bottom of the substrate so we just rotate it little bit okay and then we pick face here okay before that we rotate like this okay we want to put our port here the feet so we pick face first okay then we give the waveguide port okay so now this is showing us our waveguide port okay if we see it is showing in this direction inwards so this is good enough okay so our port okay let me set it okay our port is going to be here okay let's name it anything number one is okay folder label if you want to label it as port we can label it as port but it will appear it will bring a lot of text here so we don't need to do that if we choose negative it will change the direction but in our case we need the positive 
okay so then we have to pick the dimensions okay we have to click here okay free okay now we can see our y is selected so we are going to design it on this side okay then we have to give the x minimum okay for the port we have the standard that we use six times width of feet the as the width of the port and the height is used as five times the height of substrate plus the height of patch okay so we are going to use this standard here this is rule of thumb so we are going to use minus three times the width of feet okay we have to put a multiply sign here up to three times the width of feet okay then it's asking for the z okay z which is the height okay so height in our case is starting from minus height of patch which is minus h of p which is the bottom of the ground plane until five times the height of substrate okay this is standard so we are going to use five times height of the substrate okay this normal position we have already picked face so it will apply it will appear exactly at the same position okay the rest we don't need to change right now okay so if we see our port will be appearing big port here okay so we click it as port okay so why is it giving us two ports let's see again okay looks like we have done it twice so we just delete our port two. okay so this is our port here so now we can see on in this side that we have ground patch substrate and our port okay so let's see how our design looks like now in the okay, reset view and we can get it in the perspective view so this is our design now if we click on the components it will show everything on this window okay so then the next part so we are done with our design so next part is the simulation okay before simulation we can see here again double check that we have already defined our frequency in the start 2 and 2.8 as the minimum and maximum in gigahertz okay background we have to make sure it is normal normal for this part okay just leave it like that and then we have the boundary conditions okay boundaries we can choose according to our design for this part we can just leave it as open add space okay waveguide port we have defined okay then we are going to define our field monitors if you remember in the start there was option to define all these field monitors or some of them so we skip that part there because we wanted to see it here okay we want to see the e fields okay so apply it will appear on this side e field at 2.4 or let's say we want to see at 2.45 exactly so we can have it e field at 2.45 we want to see edge field and surface currents okay we want to see the far fields okay field sources the surface currents okay we can have this one as well okay then we have power flow okay we can key, see it current density power loss SAR, electric energy magnetic energy there are different options okay so we'll choose only few of them okay so we delete the extra e fields at 2.4 okay so this is how our design looks like after defining all the things okay <coughs> so the next part is the simulation itself okay so we will use the time domain solver and we click on the solver okay the setting we don't need to change for the time being we just click the start button and it will start our design okay so we can see our messages here the warnings and messages everything will be appearing here we can see the progress 
okay so this now our design has completed okay the simulation has completed okay we can see the progress in this window all the things are given here okay also if you want to see our uh, time taken it took around two to three minutes for the simulation it depends on the power of your pc as well so we can see the log file from the post processing we can see the log file if you are interested in the time it took for the complete simulation okay so all the details of the simulation time it took is provided here okay so it took around 171 seconds according to this pc okay so this is the pc timing okay so we go again back to our design okay now we can see our results okay where we want to see our results 1d results we can see our 1d results here okay in 1d results we can see our s11 okay so this is showing our s11 okay it's good enough in the amplitude from 0 to 14 it should be at least below 10 minus 10 db level okay but the frequency is somewhere between 2.3 and 2.4 okay so why is it so we can see we can optimize later okay why is it not exactly 2.45 because the calculations are based on the equations okay the dimension of the patch are based on the equations but when we use exactly the equation we will not get exact frequency but we will get approximately the same frequency our design frequency was somewhere here right so this is giving us as 2.3 something so there is difference of around 0.1 gigahertz so that one we have to optimize by using the uh, parametric sweep or changing the dimensions slightly okay so what if we want to see this point we can put the marker add curve marker we can either add curve marker or we can show axis marker move axis marker to the minimum okay so this is our axis marker at the minimum so our resonant frequency route right now is 2.35 gigahertz and we want to make it to the 2.45 gigahertz okay then what else we have here we have reference impedance we can see from here the reference impedance and we have balance power all these things okay other thing we want to see is vswr okay if we see at this point it is 1.4899 so it should be below 2 at the resonant frequency and around that frequency within the bandwidth okay then we other thing we can see from here is 2d results okay for the 2d results we can see our e fields okay so this is our e fields we can see our e fields and we can animate the e fields as well but if we click in this part it will show us the e fields here and if you want to animate we can animate or we can scale the e fields okay here we can define the maximum uh, let's say we define it as 10,000 then it will be slightly different okay slightly clear if fields or we can define as 1000 okay we can see the if fields okay let's say we see at the positive side okay so this is how we can see the e fields for our antenna if you want to see only at the patch we click on the patch and then we click e fields it will show us the e fields around the patch area as well okay anyhow for the surface current we can do that we can go to surface current okay as we have click on the patch when we click surface current will show us the surface currents on the patch okay so let's say in the start it, will, it was like this okay we can to have more clarity we can reset the scale uh, let's say we make it half okay and then we can see the maximum surface currents are on the sides of the patch as it should be in the theory okay let's say 25 so these are the maximum surface currents on the side of the patch in the middle right not at the top and the bottom according to theory 
this is surface current should be in this way maximum in this middle part of the patch so this is according to the theory okay we can also animate this one and we can see surface currents at different phases okay you can explore different options here okay then the next thing is power flow okay we can see the power flow as well we can simply animate it and we can see the power flow okay we cannot animate the power flow but we can change the scale here to have the more clear power flow this is very okay so we can see the power flow in the in this direction as well okay then the another important three is thing is the far fields okay so we go to the far fields here okay we because we had chosen the far field at 2.45 only so this is going to show us the far fields at 2.45 okay let's reset it okay if we choose different frequencies we can have far fields at different frequencies okay then we can right click and we can go to the far field properties we can choose which plot type we want we can have the polar type as well apply okay this is the far field showing in the polar the cartesian coordinates we can have okay for the cartesian we can set it here 360 range plot minus negative 180 and 180 so this is exactly the same that we are getting in the polar coordinates the maximum is in the 8 degree direction okay if we see in the polar coordinates again the beam the beam direction the main lobe magnitude is 5.88 db in the 8, 8 degree direction here okay you can see the cartesian okay we can see the 3d okay 3d was the earlier one okay we can rotate this one okay we use this one okay see there is bend here it's not the isotropic one that's why when we see it in our polar coordinates it shows us in this direction okay it depends on the value of the phi as well if you want to see at different okay so phi is 0 here phi is 90 here so when it is going to cut from 90 it is going to show us this type of polar because it is cutting from 90 phi at 90 okay let's say if we cut at phi at 0 what happens we go again back to polar this is phi 0 okay this is theta so let's say we cut it uh, phi at 0 we want to see the theta okay then it will show us exactly very nice at 0, 0.0 degree okay, why is it showing at 0 degree because of this cut now it is showing us this part which is very smooth here if we see from here there is bent here okay so these are, di these are the different options For the far fields okay we can explore different options again then plot mode we can either have directivity gain realize gain e field e field patterns we can change any one of them here okay then there are different other options that we can later explore okay so this is all about the design and the results so now the next step is the parametric sweep okay so for the parametric sweep what we are going to do we know that the for the variation of frequency we have to do the parametric sweep on the length right i mean we have to vary the length and it will vary the frequency so let's see let's say we apply the parametric sweep first on the length for the parametric sweep we go to modeling again sorry in the simulation okay there is parametric sweep here okay we click parametric sweep we have to define new sequence then we have to click new parameter okay all these parameters are given here so we want to apply parametric sweep on the length of the patch first 
okay so right now our length of the patch is 30 okay and our frequency is 2.35 right so we know that if we want to increase the frequency we have to decrease the length of the patch so let's say we decrease it from 30 to 25 we choose six numbers of samples so that it can or we let's say 30 we already have so we vary it from 29 until 25 which is 25 26 27 28 29 so five samples to reduce the time okay so then we we can check it here okay if we see length of the patch will be varying okay it will ask us to delete the results let's say we just delete the results okay length of the patch is 29 28 27 here we can see 26 and 25 okay that's exactly what we want okay so then what we will do is we will just start it's going to take some time because it is going to do the simulations on different length of the patch Okay, so I have stopped the simulations because it is already showing us uh, four parametric sweep results and it was taking time. So we can see that at 29, length of patch at 29, see this blue curve, it is, it is already showing us around 2.43. Okay, and if we move it to 28, it is going to, at, to be at 2.51. So our design should be somewhere around this right at 29 between 29 and 28 or maybe at 29.2 or 29.3 something like that okay so this is how we are going to optimize and we are going to get exactly at 2.45 okay we can do simulations again or we can apply parametric sweep between 29 and 29.5 and we, we will have a lot of curves here okay so now if we are going to see only this curve and we want to see the bandwidth for this curve what we can do is we can put the my year lines here okay if you remember the bandwidth we have to see is usually we see at minus 10 db level so we bring it at minus 10 db okay somewhere around here and we bring this one to minus 10 db here okay this is our minus 10 db level right so at this point the d the difference between the two lines 2.399 and 2.469 is 0 0.07 gigahertz okay so our bandwidth for this particular design is 0 0.07 gigahertz okay then we can save these results and we can uh, after we have our exact length of the patch we can simulate again on that length of the patch here at 29 it should be somewhere 29.2 maybe so at 29.2 we can simulate again and we can see the far fields and all the results again okay okay one more thing we can copy these results if we want to copy these results let's see we want to do multiple simulations we can copy this uh, sorry we can create new folder here okay let's name it as results and we can paste our results what we have from here okay so this is all the results this was s11 the okay this is the extra okay, we can delete it we don't need this part we have at 27 okay let's remove all this major lines okay we have results at 27 okay so this is showing us 
results in linear we can convert it to db so this is a result at 27 the magnitude the loss is very good at minus 20 but the frequency is around 2.6 which is not our desired frequency in here our frequency is somewhere around the desired frequency at 29 okay so we can see that this loss the return loss or the return loss if we click on db again okay return loss is increasing uh, by the decreasing of the length okay when it is going up it means it is increasing the return loss is increasing this is the best result in terms of the return loss if we compare four of them because the return loss is very low minus 20 okay remember this is in the negative so this is the best results in terms of loss but in terms of frequency this is what we are desiring at 2.45 gigahertz so at 2.45 gigahertz this is length of patch around 2.29.1 uh, or 29.2 mm okay so our frequency is increasing by decreasing the dimension this is obvious and our loss is decreasing by increasing the dimensions okay so i hope you have got the idea and you can use this uh, tutorial to design more advanced forms of the patch antennas Thank you.